In this lesson, we'll look at solving absolute value equations and inequalities. We'll solve absolute value equations and inequalities, and we'll see a, a applications involving absolute values. Let's start with the definition of absolute value. And this may be a little bit different than the one you're used to, which is to just make everything positive. We need to consider what happens if we're dealing with an algebraic expression. So our definition of absolute value is a piecewise definition, meaning it has different meanings if the values of x are different. The first one considers when x is greater than or equal to zero. In other words, if x is positive or zero, then the absolute value of x should just be x itself. And so we just write x. However, what happens if x is less than zero? The question is, what do you do to the x in order to make it positive. Well, since x is less than zero, we should multiply that value of x times negative one. So the absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is negative. Let's look at some quick examples here on the side. What is the absolute value of three? Well, since three is positive, we'll use this first row, and the absolute value of three is just 3. What about what is the absolute value of negative 5? Well since negative 5 is less than 0, we'll use the second row. And the second row says take whatever the input is, which is negative 5, and negate it. So we'll have negative of negative 5. A negative times negative 5 is in fact positive 5. So we do get positive 5 as expected, but here you see algebra in action, where you take the negative and multiply it by the input. Let's look at solutions to absolute value equations. This table tells us how to solve an absolute value equation depending on what the absolute value is equal to. In this first row, we're given the condition that k is positive, k is greater than zero. If that is the case, then we set up two equations, the one where the item inside the absolute value is equal to k and where it is equal to negative k. The second row tells us what to do if the absolute value is equal to zero. We set whatever was inside the absolute value equal to zero and then solve that equation. Now since absolute value returns a positive number or zero, if the absolute value is equal to a negative, we get no solution. And that's the third row. Finally, if you have an absolute value is equal to another absolute value, then you still just set up these two equations, x is equal to k and x is equal to negative k. In example one, we have solve for t, 4 plus 3 times the absolute value of 2t minus 5 equals 19. To solve this, the first thing I'll do is move the 4 to the other side. That leaves me with 3 times the absolute value of 2t minus 5 is equal to 15. The absolute values function just like parentheses, so first I must divide by 3. When I divide both sides by, th by 3, I still have the absolute value of 2t minus 5, and then 15 divided by 3 is 5. Next, using the chart above, we have an absolute value is equal to a positive number. That tells me I need to split it up into two parts, where the inside of the absolute value is equal to positive 5, and the inside of the absolute value is equal to negative 5. I'll solve the equation on the left first. Move the 5 to the other side, that creates a positive 10, and then divide both sides by 2. So the solution from the left side equation is t is equal to 5. On the right side, I'll move the negative 5 to the right side, that gives me a 0 and then divide both sides by t, uh, by 2 rather, and you get t is equal to 0. 
So we have two solutions, and we create the solution set with both of them, 0, comma, 5. Any order with the 0 and the 5. Let's look at example two. We have solve for z, the absolute value of seven z minus eight plus 19 is equal to four. I'll start by moving the 19 to the other side. When I do that, I have four minus 19 is equal to negative 15. Here we have the absolute value of something is equal to a negative, which cannot happen. So we have no solution. And since we have no solution, the solution set is the empty set. Let's look at example three. Solve for v. The absolute value of v minus eight is equal to the absolute value of v plus two. From our chart on the other page, we know that when we have an absolute value equals another absolute value, we set up the two equations, so I'll go ahead and split it up. And we have v minus 8 is equal to v plus 2. And we have v minus 8 is equal to negative parentheses v plus 2. You need to use parentheses on the right side because the entire right side must be negated. Let's solve the equation on the left. I have v on the left and v on the right, so they cancel. And that leaves me with negative 8 is equal to 2, which is a contradiction. Since that is a contradiction, there is no solution from the left side. We may still get a solution on the right side, so the entire problem is not just the empty set. Let's take a look at the right side. First, distribute the negative on the right. That gives v minus 8 is equal to negative v minus 2. Let's move the negative v from the right to the left side. That gives me 2v. Let's move the negative 8 from the left to the right. That gives me positive 6. Dividing both sides by 2, I get v is equal to 3. So we do get a solution on the right side and the solution set is the set 3. Next, let's look at absolute value inequalities. For k greater than 0, we have these two conditions. If the absolute value of x is less than k, then we create the three-sided any compound inequality. Negative k is less than x is less than k. And then you would solve that for the x. If the absolute value of x is greater than k, then we set up two separate inequalities with an or between them. x is less than negative k, or x is greater than k. For uh, if we have the equality part in the inequalities, then similar statements would apply. Let's look at example four. Solve for x. The absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 9. This is the absolute value of something is less than or equal to a positive number. So therefore, we use the first rule and we set up the three-sided inequality. So it's going to be negative 9 is less than or equal to 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to positive 9. And we solve this inequality like we've solved these before. First, we're going to add 3 to all three parts. That gives me negative 6 on the left is less than or equal to 2x in the middle is less than or equal to 12 on the right side. Next, we divide all three parts by positive 2.
that gives me negative 3 on the left is less than or equal to x in the middle is less than or equal to 6 on the right side. To write our solution set, we'll use interval notation. So this is negative 3 to 6, and it's closed on both the left and the right because we have the equality part. If we wanted to write this in set builder notation, we would have the set of x such that negative 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. And finally, if we wanted to represent the solution on a line, a number line, then we would mark negative 3 and negative 6. It's closed at negative 3, so I use a square bracket. It's closed at oops, positive 6. It's closed at positive 6, so we use a square bracket there. And x is between negative 3 and 6, including those two values, so we highlight everything in the middle. Let's look at example 5. Solve for x. The absolute value of 8x minus 1 is greater than 4. So in this case, we'll use two separate inequalities and we'll separate them with the or. So we're going to have 8x minus 1 is less than negative 4 or 8x minus 1 is greater than 4. I'll solve the inequality on the left side first. Let's move the negative 1 to the right side. That gives me 8x is less than negative 3. Divide both sides by 8, and that gives me x is less than negative 3 eighths. Solving the inequality on the right side, I will move the 1 to the right side, so 8x is greater than 5. Divide both sides by 8, and we get x is greater than 5 eighths. To write this in interval notation, because we have or, we will create two intervals and separate them with union. So the first inequality tells me that we have negative infinity up to negative 3 eighths, open on both of those, union, open at 5 eighths, all the way up to infinity. In set builder notation, this would be the set of x's such that x is less than negative 3 eighths, or x is greater than 5 eighths. Finally, if we look at this on a number line, let's mark negative 3 eighths. Let's mark 5 eighths. And the two inequalities, we have x is less than negative 3 eighths. And so that's going to be open, but facing toward the left, and everything less than that number, including the arrow. So shade the arrow. And then x is greater than 5 eighths. So it's going to be open at 5 eighths, but facing toward the right. And we shade everything in on the right side, including the arrow. Let's look at example 6. A foundry produces nails that are supposed to be 4 inches long. The foundry has an acceptable error in the length of 0.15 inches. Write an absolute value inequality for x, the acceptable lengths of the nails, then solve. So in this case, the foundry is going to produce nails. 
They want to produce nails that are four inches long, but if they're a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, that's okay. Their tolerance for error is 0.15 inches on either side of four. X is going to represent the length of nails that is acceptable. So we're going to have X minus four is the length of the difference between the target length and what the actual length of a given nail is. Now, because we're measuring the error in the lengths, we're going to use absolute value. And that's because we don't care if the error is above, meaning that the nail turned out to be longer than the anticipated four inches, or if it's lower and it's shorter than four inches. We just want it to be within 0.15 inches on either side of four inches. So this needs to be less than or equal to 0.15. And then we solve this inequality with the absolute value. It's an absolute value is less than or equal to a number. So we'll split it up into the three-sided inequality. So negative 0.15 is less than or equal to x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0.15. To solve this, add 4 to all three parts. That gives us 3.85 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4.15. So the solution set is nails that are 3.85 inches up to 4.15 inches, including the two endpoints. And if you look at this on the number line, I'm going to mark down the target 4, and then if I go 0.15 inches to the left, we end up at 3.85, and if I go 0.15 inches to the right, we end up at 4.15. And so any length of nail between these two is acceptable.